Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad you could join us. Welcome to the South Huntington Library's uh, webinar on um, the microbiome. So uh, Chef Catherine is here with us and she's going to explain to us what the microbiome is and how it affects our health. So Catherine, take it away. Oh, I'm so happy everybody's here and I'm so honored to be um, teaching at the library. And I want to thank Catherine so much because she's extended this class to family and friends. She's very generous always. And it's because of her that we have such great programming in this library. So um, this is a serious subject, but we're going to have fun. And I'm breaking this um, one hour down into three segments, into three parts. The first part is the science, and we'll get through it. The second part is where to find the healthy foods that support and produce healthy probiotics. And the third part is your diet, diet diversity, and how to make a plan for every one of you to put into action to enhance your life and the life of your family. So, um, so let's go and let's have fun. And I just want to say one thing also, I took a great walk this morning and it was just a reminder of the magnificence and the intelligence in the universe. Everything starts to bloom in perfect orchestration. The forsythia, the um, tulips will be coming up, the greens coming up. My parents' um, irises that are 70 years old are popping through the ground. So what, what does that mean? It means there's such an, an intelligence in the universe. And this is the intelligence that's in our body. And you will see after an hour, I will prove to you that we have this magnificent intelligence inside of us. Okay, so the gut microbiome. Your gut is okay, the case. Yes. Are you, well, uh, cause you haven't shared your screen yet. Okay. You want to go to the bottom and share your screen. Oh, no, here we go. Okay. Can you hear me? I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Could you just tell us a little bit about your background? Yes, hold on one second. I'm trying to navigate this. Let's, um, Catherine. Um, I'm coming. <laughs> Catherine, what would I do without you? Okay, my background is going to be. You're going to you're going to see that at the end of the presentation. I, since I'm a little five minutes behind, let's talk about that at the end. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry, Catherine. I'm afraid to get out here. Did you share your screen yet? No. Minimize. Would we minimize? Yes. Share screen down here. Share screen. And then from the beginning. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Okay, um, whoever asked that question, um, let's wait to the very end because um, we have a nice flow going on. And um, we don't. I want you to know that the umbrella under all my information comes under functional medicine. So um, your gut is the gateway to your good health. The gut microbiome refers to, refers to a whole community of billions of live bacteria that inhabit our gut, our skin, our mouth, and other parts of our body. It also includes things like critters, like fungi and viruses, and even yeast. Our good microbiomes, well, they're central, irreplaceable parts of everything that happens to us. Without adequate quantities of them, there is hardly any limit to the number of things that can go wrong. They are like the prison guards supervising the activity of the other bacteria in our GI tract. We all have very unique microbiome 
And similar to fingerprints, no two microbiomes are alike. Our bodies are home to more than, more than bacterial cells than human cells. Microbiomes are multitasking force. They are the largest organ in our body. So our gut is our universe. Let's visit this today and let's have fun. Highway to health or pathway to pathology. This is our inner tube of life. It's a vast amount of real estate. The total surface of our gut is about the size of a badminton court or the size of a small studio apartment, yikes. Sadly, it could be a source of suffering for so many. Right now in 2021, we have a digestive disease epidemic. Turn this around to health. We can use food and other healing modalities in bringing the numbers in control. Weed and seed, I call it. Remove out the bad foods. Find out the root cause. Search for infection, inflammatory responses, and heal and reseed with the right types of food. The gut is our pathway to disease. Probiotics, usually bacteria, sometimes yeast, live in our lung, skin, urinary tract, our whole digestive system, and help regulate metabolism, make vitamins, especially vitamin K. They are as big as our liver, these probiotics, these microbiomes. Imagine this, probiotics are like dogs. There are strains and species. Strains, well, there's a dog can be a lab, the dog can be a golden retriever. So this is the two popular ones, the strands. The, the uh, lactobacillus and the bifida bacteria. There's bacteria in our mouth, but it's different from the bacteria in our colon. So these are the different strands. If a hundred, one, a hundred, of, a hundred of us were in one room, not all of us would have the same strain of one single probiotic. The bacteria we're born with are all varied in all of us. Did our moms have a C-section? What stress did we have as a baby? Were we on antibiotics the first months of our lives? This all affects our present microbiome. Our flora is established in that first year of our life. This is our special force. Microbiomes, including bad bacteria, are the smallest creatures that ever lived. They are also the most abundant and successful organisms on earth, outnumbering the stars that we know in the universe by more than a million times over. They created the earth's oxygen rich atmosphere and they make up half the weight of the life on earth. Yet other than bacteria, they've been studied very little. Your GI tract is home to trillions of bacteria, some beneficial and some not. Think of them as your internal army on the battlefields of the gut because they protect us against foreign invaders that can cause infection and disease. They communicate with us constantly. Receptors sit on intestinal tracts waiting to bind to something. The microbiome really operates like an organ, only it's not. It's made of tissue in our body. It's made of trillions of microorganisms. Why is the gut so powerful? It isn't the gut itself, but rather it's the microbiome. All right, everybody, picture this. Food comes down our throat. Maybe the food has mold or yeast on it. Maybe you picked up salmonella in a restaurant. 
or you bought a peach and in two days you see mold on it. It hits the stomach. Here is, comes our battery acid, our tiger acid, I call it, but it's our hydrochloric acid. It could burn your skin off your finger. That acid keeps us from getting food poisoning. Some friendly microbes help neutralize everything. And it could be one of many of those strands I spoke about, bifobacteria or lacto. For that acid goes into the small intestine. Not many micro, microbes are in there or in the large. And these bacterias are different from the ones we have in our mouth. So the food goes into our colon. The main function of the bacteria and the microbiomes is responsible for the maintenance of the colon and the reproduction of new cells. Okay, so there are gatekeepers for the colon cells are the microbes. We, we run not on glucose in the colon like we do throughout our body, but burephine and glutamine in the small intestines. These are two molecules that help us break up that food. The fibers on our veggies, our fruits, our beans, our whole grains. It helps the cells in the colon get energy. Fibers get fermented by our bacteria that we just created. And then we make some short chain fatty acids, which are really important. And they help us metabolize chemicals and heavy metals, which we all are exposed to in our life from time to time. <clears throat> so that's why we need this good bacteria. It helps detox the body. Okay. Here's dispose, um, all right, sometimes this is hard. Um, dis okay, I'm having a little time with this. The bad bugs, the bad thugs, dysbosis. It's a disruption of the normal ecosystem and other, or and other organisms in the gut. So the key to great health is swaying our microbiome from being unhealthy, harmful microbes to beneficial, life-supporting, and healthy building ones. We have three to four pounds of microbes in our body. When there is an imbalance in good and bad, as seen in this slide, this is known as dysbiosis. Symptoms include gas, bloating, upset stomach, constipation, diarrhea, but there's also less recognized signs, such as headaches, allergies, brain fog, and weight gain. A study uh, conducted at UCLA found that bad bacteria ingested in food either harm us or help the 100 billion neutrons and trillion of connections orchestrating everything from understanding memory to movement and sleep. So unhealthy bugs, like you see in this slide, can spark anything from pediatric cancer to Alzheimer's disease. There's also been some new scientific literature on that this dysbiosis can influence treating autism in children. So we're gonna look at lifestyle and see, and see the do's and don'ts. Okay, our multitasking microbiome. I call this picture our happy land. This is our happy land in our gut. It's funny looking, but it, it is a happy land of bacteria. Direct local and, and immune function. These guys, these happy guys you see in the picture, they cool inflammation, they fight infections. They enhance nutrient absorption. They ensure mucosa layer integrity. That's the lining of our intestines, which by the way, it heals every few weeks. And if we're having problems, we can turn that around with a healthy lining. 
and it promotes optimum bowel movement. So this is all our happy guys you see in this picture. And just as your stomach knows to secrete digestive juices when you're ready to eat, these guys located in the intestines, they have their own intelligence. Millions of bacteria living in our intestines are on the front line of our immune system. It's sort of your body's own ecosystem of microbes that have different functions and they keep your body in balance. Another word for balance is homeostatus. When we're missing these happy guys you see in the picture, which is our microbiome diversity, our immune cells are shaky and jumpy. Okay, this is my very favorite slide in my presentation. To the left side is a lot of biology, but to the right side, I think you're gonna understand this. The brain and the gut, happy gut, happy brain. They are connected. You see the arrow that goes from the brain, it actually pierces the stomach. It's called the vagus nerve. Some of, some of you may have heard of that nerve. It's been in the news a lot. So the gut is regarded as the second brain for a good reason. It contains a distant nervous system, a very distinct nervous system with hundreds and millions of neutrons. Also various microorganisms numbering in the trillions that affects both immune and digestive systems. 75% of our nerves that are, go into our gut via this arrow through the stomach, the vagus nerve, literally helps us with so many decisions. Deepak Chopra says in his literature, it's a key signaling pathway. That's the, the vagus nerve you see on the arrow. It's a power plant for gut-related brain chemicals like serotonin. We've heard of that. That's the relaxing chemical for mood anxiety level and depression. All have origins in this digestive tract. The nourishment you take in and the nutrients you extract from the process of digestion impact brain function. Feeding your second brain whole foods, rich in neuroprotective nutrients found in dark leafy vegetables, legumes, nuts, and seeds is keeping the blues at bay. And we all like to think that we want to go with our intuition, what our gut is telling you. Well, this slide shows you why the gut and the brain are connected. And this information has been around for a very long time. Wow. Check out this slide. It's from a book by Peter Menzel. It's called What America Eats. It's not really the typical American family, but in other states, it could be. It's a picture of a total toxic environment, which contributes to chronic diseases, obesity, a disease epidemic. This food on the table changes your microbiome. This is uncharted territory. I say it's like a bad shark movie. It's like a storm just rising within. It's a digestive cascade waiting to happen. These, this food, the people here, they're drowning in excess salt and sugar concentrated juices on the table and farm factory meats is what I see on the table. We all may see different things. Chips on the wall, fruit that may not be organic. My personal feeling, it's, a, it's a, just a catch 22 for, for some cultures, which makes me feel very sad because they not, may not be able to afford or have the knowledge that we have. And from what this food does, how it could cause chronic illnesses, 
that inevitably will make people sick, then they have to take drugs, maybe antibiotics, that have a, an adversary effect on their microbiome level. And these drugs and keep taking antibiotics because they get sick or like, like little bombs that it just explode in your healthy uh, gut microbiome world and could take months to recover and replenish the good bacteria. So let's hope this isn't our food. And if you know somebody whose food this is, let's help them with the knowledge that we have today. Diet has a very powerful influence on our microbiome, which you're gonna see. About 75% of the food in our westernized diet is of limited or no benefit to our gut. That's the food we just saw in that picture. Most of it is mostly refined carbs. It is already absorbed in the upper part of the GI tract and what eventually reaches the large intestines is of like no value to us. It contains only a small amount of minerals, vitamins, and other nutrients that we need. This is very, very sad. An investigation showed that obese, obese people have a less diverse microbiome than thin people, proving that there is a variation in bacteria. And that is the key to our health and our weight man, maintenance. We are overfed and undergermed. So it, I know it makes us sad sometimes to see experiments done on animals. But when these little guys were switched to a westernized diet, high in fat and sugar and low in plant foods, after one day, they showed changes in their micro, microbiome composition. So this is very profound. A high fat, low fiber, low fat diet really changes the microbiome composition. Look at these beautiful foods. Diet diversity is gut diversity. Thrive with plants. I actually have a sticky note in my kitchen that says this, thrive with plants. Well, diet changes the microbiomes. Many different plants that feed multiple types of gut bacteria increase the gut diversity. So we wanna eat plants of different colors. It's called the rainbow diet. And Dr. Mark Hyam, who is, um, he's just a really cool doctor. He's everywhere right now. He's written so many books. He says, aim for 30 different plant foods each week, counting all your vegetables, fruits, whole grains, nuts and seeds, and herbs. Keep a list and add up your plant foods until you reach 30 in seven days. It sounds like you're not gonna be able to do it, but believe me, you're gonna be able to do it. Think abundance, not restriction. What happens when we eat all these nourishing foods you see in my slide? Fiber and the diversity of plant foods are one of the most important foundations for our healthy gut, and even better for our stress responses. When you eat food with polyphenoids, which we know are in blueberries, kale, green tea, a whole relationship forms between the food and our intestinal gut. Low fiber impacts your gut in a not a good way. But all of these foods that are high in fiber, which is really part of a new nutrient group, called polyphenoids. And that is all the colored, all the colored foods, blueberries, black beans, purple cabbage, things that stain our hands when we're cutting them. These are polyphenoids and they serve as food for our probiotics. They need each other. It's like this whole wonderful relationship. So remember all the colored foods, they actually modulate in inflammation, and they give good messages 
to every part of your body. So while you're introducing some new for, some new foods, some of you out there that are saying, well, I don't eat all those mushrooms or I don't eat kiwi, remember to slowly introduce new foods. Increase water intake uh, along with increasing fiber. So when you're increasing more fiber, like let's say flax, flax seed, chia seed, hemp seed, you wanna go slowly if this is new to you and you wanna increase your water because you could experience a little bloat or gas from all of these plant-based foods. Okay, so this is my food pyramid for gut health. Billions of bacteria that live in our intestines help convert, convert these foods into energy. Like the slide you showed, I showed you all those happy um, microbes and bacteria in the picture. Well, they help these foods. They help convert them to energy in our body. Food is washing over our genes. Immune, our immune system is scoping out. It's figuring out, is my food I ate for lunch friendly or foe? Microbiomes help digest the vitamins from all these foods you see on the left. B vitamins formed in the colon by the microbes then communicate with the immune cells. Here we go again with the language that I spoke about before, the intelligence in our body. This food is information. So eat the rainbow. For, for those out there who don't know about the dirty dozen list, please Google it and learn about it. Find, it, find out the foods that are on that list that you must buy organic, because if you don't, they could really harm us. Strawberries, greens, and apples mu must be organic. You must justify buying those organic. Did you know that glyphosate that's on Roundup that's sprayed by Monsanto on crops that are not organic, they actually are like taking antibiotics for your gut. Cheap and plentiful oils like canola, corn, cottonseed, safflower, sunflower, rice bran and soy are among the unhealthiest food oils and foods that you could have in your pantry. Dr. Frank Lipman, L-I-P-M-A-N, you have um, in your handouts a wonderful piece um, by him on the microbiome. He says that the microbiome can be damaged by processed foods, weed killers and antibiotics, but this can be fixed with organic foods, diet and probiotics. It's critical to our well being. Don't be a stranger in your own kitchen. Cook your own food. Okay, so I love this slide. This is your action plan. Your action plan is going to be crowd out all of the bad foods to the right with toxic ingredients and bring in more of the foods on the right. This slide says food is medicine. It all enhances on the left, our gene express expression, our epigenetics, cellular communication, hormones and signaling. That means the language I spoke about, the intelligence I spoke about that's in our body. It's our immune system strength. Macronutrients, protein, fat, complex carbs, micronutrients, vitamins and minerals, fiber and phytonutrients, all on the left here on this slide. On the right, be careful of synthetic sweeteners. They really hurt our gut microbiome. And sh sugar is eight times, white sugar, that's in so many refined foods, is eight times more addictive than cocaine. Increase fiber. Okay, here's another slide I love. 
because so many of you who know me know that I really, I'm always talking about, well, just see quinoa and amaranth and whole grains. Quinoa is a superfood. These are the big players for us, for our microbiomes. Quinoa and amaranth are, they belong to a group of superfoods and have a strong nutritional composition that favors the microbiome. This is all new scientific research. And it shows that these two grains have a prebiotic potential and that their weekly in intake may improve the dysbosis, the sign we, the slide we saw before with all that bad bacteria, yeast and gas, and may in, maintain good gastrointestinal health. Quinoa and amaranth are rich in other macronutrients and micronutrients, and they have an exceptional balance of essential amino acids, almost like your salmon, your oily, fatty fish. They're abundant in anti-inflammatory activities, therefore lowering the oxid oxidative stress related to diseases, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. You, you, you will have two recipes for me in your handouts with quinoa, but there's so many ways to use quinoa. Please contact me if you're not cooking with quinoa. I have so much to share. Foods to heal the intestinal lining. This is what we're going to look at now in our next section. We're going to look at cultured foods, yogurt, kefir, fermented foods. I call all of this on the slide our accountability partners for restoring balance. Have an, having an abundance of this good diverse bacteria. So let's look at practical strategies imagining supporting our immune system. This is a great slide. Let's look in the middle. These are a probiotic health benefits that we're gonna see now. These are core benefits. This is our core. Good bacteria, our metabolism helps produces T regulatory cells. These cells tell your immune system, stop, put the brakes on. We can, we can relate this to COVID and things that are happening right now with people with really low immune systems. We need these cells and these cells are produced by the probiotics, the microbiomes in our body. Stop, put the brakes on, they're saying. Today, there's so many people with autoimmune diseases. We all know people who have them, respiratory illnesses, yeast and bladder infections. These probiotics that we are looking at have a modulating effect. Miso soup that we're gonna talk about and that's in our handout, that alone modulates the immune system. All right, so here's a wonderful handout that you have. I'm suggesting these foods that put the brakes on inflammatory cascades and helps regulate cholesterol in our body. If you're not familiar with these, we're gonna go over them quickly. They are available to us. Um, when you choose yogurt and kefir, make sure it's the organic if possible. Miso, miso paste always needs to be organic. Choose the white, sweet, mellow, or there's red, which is more potent. And that is that modulates our immune system, miso alone. Tempeh is a high form of soy. We're gonna look at sauerkraut in a little while. We're gonna talk about that too. This um, is the only one you may not recognize. And this is from the root of the agave plant. Everybody knows about kombucha. Everybody's seen it and drinking it. Raw vinegar says apple cider vinegar is our friend for our gut. Sourdough bread is my favorite. Never feel guilty eating a piece of um, sourdough bread that's organic. My favorite brand is called Bread Alone. 
I find it in Whole Foods and it's so delicious and satisfying. And again, has probiotic activities. Beer, well, a lot of the new um, beers that are out, the new microbreweries are producing, beers are actually healthy for us. Don't choose beers that have caramel coloring and you can see those on the labeling. And always wine in, med in moderation. And if you can find organic wine, that's even better. These are the prebiotics. Now remember probiotics and prebiotics are different. And if there's one thing that you learned today in our hour together is that probiotics and prebiotics are different and they're found in different ways. So pre prebiotics are found in Jerusalem artichokes, which are, which are out now and are so delicious. They're, they almost look like ginger. They're these little nubby stubs. Um, they're expensive. You don't need a lot. But I recently um, just roasted them in the oven and threw them in with other vegetables. They actually taste like the bottom of artichokes. They're delicious. Leeks. Um, I hope you're cooking with leeks. They belong to the Alilium family, which is garlic, shallots, um, onions, and they, they, they heal, they heal our intestines. Um, and as Rick, and there's a written report in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that probiotics and prebiotics are partners of our defense system. And your gut requires an abundance of living microorganisms called probiotics and prebiotics. They break down our food. All of these foods you see on the slide, they help break down our foods. Uh, when we look at cheeses, um, do buy, look for artisan cheeses in the market and please buy grass fed if that's possible. Okay, um, talking a little about um, sauerkraut because um, sauerkraut is just the perfect, ex perfect example of healing the gut, keeping the gut healthy. And um, from my very favorite, as everybody knows who knows me, I'm always boasting about the cruciferous family of vegetables. They're anti-cancerous, um, antiviral, they're fat flushers, they move food quickly through the intestines. Um, they're medicine, they're medicine for the gut. So this is medicine for the belly. Um, I, picked, I like eating a sauerkraut. Um, it's easy to get in most stores. By the way, ladies, always great free recipes from the Eden Company, you'll see on that slide. And again, besides being a super rich in many probiotics, it's sauerkraut, cabbage is part of fat flushing programs which have great possibilities of stimulating our metabolism, breaking up the macronutrients efficiently and really helping us, you know, helping us maintain a good weight. But buyer beware everyone, buy your sauerkraut without preservatives um, and pickles too, because there's sodium benzenoin, which is a really dangerous preservative. Um, my Husbands um, loves to tell me a story about his grandparents in Pennsylvania. They uh, had a little farm in their yard. They, every year, they always had um, homemade sauerkraut and pickles. And um, they all lived very healthy lives. And um, I really believe in that fermented foods. Here's a beautiful picture of um, fermented foods that are available for us. Okay, so in my slides, we've seen key strategies that I've outlined where to find probiotics and prebiotics to help us reap the benefits that come with a healthy microbiome. Um, this, is tar I've, this picture is targeted support. Um, we have kimchi here. This jar um, could be something you could get in an Italian restaurant on a plate, fermented and pickled vegetables. Um, we have miso soup, we have yogurt, we have kefir, um, all targeted support. I, I love this picture. So all the fermented foods now, they've really reached like fad status.
surface. Um, but remember, healthy microbiomes. Think pickled ginger at an Asian market or kimchi or sauerkraut. Remember, ladies, herbals also promote healthy digestion in the tract. Herbal bitters stimulate the production of bio, bile and digestive enzymes into the small intestines. Teas of ginger root are wonderful. Spices of cumin, fennel, create a very healthy environment. So in this slide, we see that all these cultures have their fermented and cultured foods. They may be, you may recognize them, uh, especially Asia. But let's look down at America. We're in our standard American diet. We really don't have cultured foods, but this is what my whole presentation is about, finding these foods. So down below, we see pickles, sauerkraut, wines, cheeses, and fermented dairy. So this slide is sort of the history of cultured foods in the world. I love the history of foods and herbs. All right, we're coming to an end. Hang in there. I know there's a lot here. These are our principles, our integrity uh, that come into play based on nutritional science that I've given you, relaxed and mindful eating. What does that mean? What does that really mean? It means um, keeping a sacred space between meals that we're not snacking a lot. But we've told ourselves that we're, we're full, we're happy with what we ate. We don't have to keep looking for food. Rhythm and ritual, that's living close to mother nature. Whole fresh unprocessed foods. We've looked at that on our slides. Our flavor factor, what is that? That's herbs and spices, they give us energy. Digestive friendly foods. That's a lot of bone broth. Bone broth is a wonderful food to have like around like four o'clock in the day when you're starving. It has gelatin in it um, and all sorts of very healing molecules that heal the gut and make us feel like we don't need to look for snacks. It's a wonderful uh, food source, bone broth. Home cooking, especially during COVID. Let's cook for our families. Eating out, we don't get the nutrition that we need. And I like to tell people because I've worked in restaurants that a lot of times the workers can't stay home when they're sick and they come into work sick. They work very hard, they need their income and they are exposed to the foods we eat. So cook home as much as you can. And I like to say, keep a pretty refrigerator, keep a pretty refridge. Keep it neat, keep it organized. Why? It makes you want to eat more vegetables when that drawer is like really organized and clean. Eat empowered and share that. Share that knowledge with your friends. If you need to take supplements, ladies, start with a good multivitamin from food. You'll see on the bottle, it says from food, um, like, um, I can't think of them right now. There's many ones out there, um, not, not from a laboratory. They're not synthesized from processed elements in a laboratory, but they come from food. Um, fish oil is so important. Vitamin D protects our mitochondria. That's the energy in our cells. Reversitol, which is in wine, you could take in a supplement. Turmeric, green tea. And get your cortisol levels down if you're stressed during the day. Exercise, breathe, the take five plan during the day. Play, love, and definitely prioritize sleep. Very important for our gut microbiome. Okay, here's our gal. This is our happy um, inner environment. Um, it's trouble-free and it's the key to our immune system and keeping our whole body healthy. Omnivore, our inner omnivore. The stronger and the more resistant your gut is, the more harmony 
and balance in those trillions of bacteria I spoke about that help your heart, brain, and liver, and just about every other body function you have, your stomach, your small intestines, your colon, they all need this. It's miraculous work, all of these bacterias working together, good bacterias. Here we have in her gut, in her body, we have microbiomes that have been developing since birth. Do you know that a child is covered in a soup of microorganisms coming through the birth control, control um, birth con canal? In the mouth, they actually, the baby swallows it. It's all over their skin. It's, it's the intelligence in their bodies now. And when a woman becomes pregnant, she actually starts making more flora in her body. It's a miracle. It's the intelligence that I'm talking about. And all of our lives, you and me, we're eating for two. Our invisible world of bacteria, our food and those guys. We can't see them. They're our bacteria and they dominate our world. It's time to recognize the essential roles microbiomes play in our lives. They shape our past and they will shape our future in ways we are only beginning to understand. And I hope my presentation today is helping you to understand. Back in the 90s, gut health was not a dinner conversation according to emerging research. They have profound impact on our mood, behavior, and our well being, these guys. A big study research paper out of the United Kingdom says people eating seven servings of fruit and veggies a day decreases mortality from causes 24% 24, 24 and decreases cancer by 33%. That's unbelievable, that's wonderful. That's in the rainbow diet we spoke about. Good quality foods, and I say low animal foods, mostly plant-based foods. Everyone here will have a long life. The quality through may change from this information. The quality of your life may change now with the info, but I encourage everyone to work on their diets. I recently read a very profound article by a young professor of microbiology from the University of Massachusetts. She called a healthy, she calls healthy micro, gut microbiome, and she says it could really prevent COVID-19. The army, she states, of micro, microbes living inside of you are essential to fight off threats, including viruses that could cause the, the COVID. All right, this is a wonderful way to end our hour together today. Um, mindful eating as food for thought. This was in the New York Times. Um, but I'd like to say um, in layman terms to really relate to this, let's be present to our food. My personal story is here recently I ate out, um, came from a long day, ate really fast, drank wine while I was eating, um, never chewed. I was talking while I was eating, um, felt awful the next day. I literally did not digest my food. So I want ladies before we end, just to, just to imagine this. I do tell this story and um, in my teaching over 28 years, this is always something I like to end with. When we sit down to a meal, light a candle and be grateful don't inhale your food. Our stomachs are small. They're about the size of your fist. We need to break down our macronutrients. Our stomach acid, which I spoke before as tiger acid, it's our hydrochloric acid. If we put our finger in that stomach, in our stomach, we would burn it, burn our finger but we're not gonna get the benefits of that acid if we're drinking water while we're eating. 
the ideal pH level of our what of our acid is very acidic. It's actually 1.9. It's housed very nicely in our stomach. It's called our digestive fire. So when we drink water, which is, has a pH level of seven or more, and water, of course, is important, but when we drink that water while we're eating, what we do is that we don't assimilate our, our minerals from our food because that pH of seven into the one point pH of our acid dilutes everything. So slow down your cooking, uh, your eating, chew well, incredibly well, be grateful and present and mindful of your food and you will benefit so much more. And then drink between meals, not with your food. So I know there was so much, I actually left out a little, a little, a little so we could have some room. Um, this is my information. I know most people have my information. Um, and I am available to every one of you uh, today. I hope I'm getting emotional. I know I'm, I'm doing it a long time and getting emotional, but I hope you've learned something. I hope that this was helpful to you because I believe in it so much. And it's, it's fascinating. And it's so exciting to understand the digestive tract. I feel so grateful to share this information with you for all, to all of you. So now um, we're going to um, stop our share. Um, we are going to go to our gallery of everybody. Can everybody hear us? Not yet. Yeah. Can everybody yes. hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. I know that was a lot, um, but you have great handouts to look at. You have some recipes. I'm always available to every one of you. If you wanna call me or email me, you have my email. Um, I loved preparing this. It was a gift to me to have this um, lecture. You can see I'm very emotional about it. I love this information. It's gonna change your life. If you just do one thing, maybe make quinoa or eat pickles, or a good sauerkraut, it's going to change your life. I know I'm crazy. I'm a crazy healthy chef, but I know it's going to make a difference. And all my information is from wonderful doctors, researchers. I'm so lucky to have gone to um, a school recently and I've got my um, integrated um, nutritional degree. Everything we learned today is based on science and it falls under the umbrella of um, functional medicine. <coughs> Your general doctor may not have all this information because it's said in, um, in medical school, they're not giving out this information. They don't even talk about nutrition. So that's why we, we need to get this information through other sources. And it's real. This is the real thing. Do you agree, everyone? Do you have questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Catherine, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh oh, thank you. Uh, my wonderful. hand is up. My hand is up. Do you see that, Catherine? Is that Laura or Virginia? No, I'm Ginny. My hand is up. Okay, Ginny. Yes, Ginny. Okay. All right. One thing. I want to know the surname of the author. What America Eats. Peter what? Mendel? Oh, okay. Um, his, his book, I believe it's Menzel. It's Menzel, and the spelling is um, M-E-N-Z-E-L. What America okay. Eats. It's a great okay. book. Okay, okay. And my other question is about your background. I don't, are you a nutritionist or what's your, I don't know what your background of study is. Okay, I'm a holistic chef for 28 years, studying nutrition on my own for 28 years. And um, I, I specialize in uh, cooking uh, for illnesses and special diets. I'm a lecturer. Um, I have a wonderful book out. Um, I've been on the circuit for 28 years. I've been on the radio. Um, I've been um, affiliated with some wonderful holistic doctors on Long Island. And I recently um, graduated from Institute of Integrated Medicine, where uh, a see, lot I, of the information is from. See, I'm not familiar with that school. Okay, Institute. but you can, you know what, Ginny, you can call me. We don't have okay. much time left and I'd be glad to chat with you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can I just say something? Yes. It's Katrina Catherine. Hi, Katrina. I don't know if you can see me. 
Yes. Um, but I just want to speak on behalf. Um, I went to one of, very quickly, um, Karen's on here, um, invited me to one of, Kat, one of Chef Catherine's demonstrations many, many years ago, um, prior to her cooking book coming out, which I have. Um, and I'm actually quoted, thankfully quoted, I think in the book, um, just because I was just very mesmerized by her cooking. And I was also lucky enough for a, a nice stretch of time to be able to sous chef alongside of her. Um, and actually, if I seems like I was busy doing something, I'm making one of her veggie meatloafs. Oh, I, I love you. famous turkey veggie loaf. <laughs> I um, love you. A friend that has COVID. <laughs> So um, I can speak on behalf of many women. Um, you know, she's true to her craft. And I think somebody, is that Jamie? Did we cook for Jamie? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that. Thank you so much. I know I love you and I'm honored to have worked with you. And you are a, an educated chef and you're trying. All right, and you help so many people. Trying. So all of us, we want, you know, when we feel good, it's contagious, and we want to share the knowledge with other people. We'll have a better, happier world when we do. Share the knowledge. Yep. Okay, um, Catherine, we have a question in the chat. Uh, what is the difference in function between the pre and probiotics? Okay, yeah, there is a really, there is a different function with that. Um, uh, think of it like this. I know this sounds funny, but um, probiotics uh, and prebiotics are like dogs. There's different strains and there's different species. Like there's a golden retriever, there's a lab. Um, so there's different strands of probiotics and prebiotics. Um, we need prebiotics to help us with probiotics. Um, you may see that if you're taking a supplement, you may not need a prebiotic supplement, but you definitely need, will need the probiotic supplement. If you're healing from an intestinal issue, um, your health practitioner may suggest getting a probiotic with a prebiotic in it. But as you, in your, in your handouts, you will see two lists, probiotics and prebiotics. They're different species of uh, bacteria. So they are different and they're both essential. And a lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that till a few years ago. They're different. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now, Karen has her hand up. Did you have a question, Karen? Um, you have to unmute yourself. I mean, can you believe I got so emotional? That's how passionate I am about the gut. This is oh, fascinating okay. information. Okay, here's can Karen. Hi, sorry. I'm so not a techie person, so I'm sorry. That took me a couple minutes to figure that out. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Karen. Um, I miss you. I miss you too. I just have a quick question because you talked about the... Um, about the probiotics and, and uh, prebiotics. And I know somebody just asked that question, but I recently, I try to avoid yogurt because I'm trying not to have too much dairy in my diet. So I recently discovered from Trader Joe's, um, they have a cashew yogurt and a coconut yogurt. Are you getting probiotics from that? Or is it only when you have yogurt that's made from regular milk, cow's milk? Well, first of all, I know those yogurts and you, you wanna look on the label. Some of them are high in sodium and some of them are high in sugar. Um, they're not your, they are not your best sources of probiotics. Kefir would be your better sauce, kefir. Okay. And um, there's so many yogurts on the, on the market that are, that are um, not true to what they say they are. A lot of the fillers that are the probiotics, remember probiotics have to be grown on something. Before you get probiotics, they're grown on something. So they've already had some use out of them. 
So you're better off getting um, that culture in um, a better yogurt than that. And um, I think Wallaby, Wallaby makes a good yogurt and um, um, for, Forgers, there's a new yogurt out, it's F-O-R something. And that's the better one. Trader Joe's is not the better one. Okay, Forgers, and what was the other one you said? Um, I'm not, I think Wallaby may, but that's dairy. You want non-dairy, then that would be um, the, whole, the, uh, the first one I spoke about. The first one. The first yeah, one. I'll okay. take a picture of it. I have it at home and I'll send it to you. Okay, what about great. goat yogurt? Goat's milk yogurt. Goat yogurt is very good, but what, look at the label. You always want to see the sodium and the sugar. That's because remember the sugar will kill the good uh, microbes that are in it. Okay. I, I really highly recommend you only need, but this is the best thing. You only need a little bit of like sauerkraut every day or a good pickle, uh, cook with leeks. You only need, we only need a little of um, all these cultures every day. And also if you're new to this and you're just starting, start slowly because you could get bloat and gas and don't blame me, but you could. So you want to start slowly. This is new information that you're taking in. Some of us eat this way, but, and we don't get bloated or gas, but you will, if you just start eating like a box, uh, I mean, a jar of pickles tomorrow. Right. Uh, <laughs> Thank uh, you, Catherine. Catherine. Yeah. Okay. It's Virginia, Ginny again. Stand up again. Uh, yep. Well, my question is, um, could you restate the vegetables? I mean, the fruits that you think we should definitely buy organic. I know it was the, Strawberries and the other berries, what? Right, you um, the blueberries. So Ginny, you need, you need to download the Dirty Dozen list and all yeah, that. Yeah, I read that, yeah. Yeah, all that information is there. Apple, oh, okay. yeah. Right. Strawberries are the, yeah, strawberries Bye. are uh, pesticide bombs. They're just bombs of um, bad things and they definitely need to be organic as well as apples, raisins. Um, and you want your blueberries, which are so high in polyphenoids. Um, they are like, we need to eat like a little bowl of blueberries every day. Um, and okay. you can have them in the morning, in the night. Sometimes I have them in the night. Um, they're full of uh, pesticides if they're not organic. And, okay. they, and uh, Costco sells a huge box of them for like $6 organic. Okay. My second question is when you put uh, fruits into a food processor to make a smoothie. Do you lose the fiber or do you change the organic uh, complexity of, the, of the, the fruit? Do you lose anything by putting them in a, making a smoothie? Um, no, that's a good question. Uh, some days make a smoothie and some days eat the whole fruit for the fiber. Remember what we, we saw in the slide? Those, uh, those little creatures, those critters, they need fiber for the short chain fatty acids. So you well, need that, fiber, you need to bite but, into an apple. Yes, but they're good in the smoothies too, Jenny. So some but, days put them in smoothies and some days eat them. But do you lose the fiber in a smoothie? Yes, you're gonna lose some fiber. That's, all right, that's yes. the piece, that's all right. So, yes. cause I've done them and Catherine, I'm drinking it and I'm saying, I'd much rather be chewing this. I'd much yeah. rather. Yeah, that, and right. you know what that is? That's your brain and gut. That is your intuition. The slide that the brain and the gut are connected. That's your intuition. That's your gut thank feeling you. and go yep. by that gut feeling. Okay, thank you. That's what I thought. Thank you. You're welcome. Catherine? Yes. I have something here I got from um, Cornucopia in Sable. Are you, do you know Cornucopia? Yes, yes it's a great store. I don't know if you can see this. Or it's coming in backwards. A collagen? Yeah, collagen peptides, vital proteins. Okay, well, right. So but I, I don't really um, think that you need to take that if you're eating the type of diet that I spoke about. If you follow those, pick, the, if you look at the slides, the diet diversity, you're going to get all that. That's a processed food you have there. It's not even a food. It's a supplement. I don't think you need it. Johanna, I think you need to uh, spark up your diet with uh, more fruits and vegetables um, and the probiotics and cultured foods. I don't think you need that product, but I could talk to you. I'll talk to you about it on the phone. Okay. So we don't take it. And, and another thing, everything you said was, you know, very good, very informative, but 
I can't possibly eat all this food. I don't know how I would even manage 30, 30. Um, no, it's not a lot. It sounds like a lot. Keep a piece of paper in the kitchen and write everything down. And I, because I know you, I know I want you to spark up your diet with more fruits and vegetables. You can do I it. Do, I do eat fruits and vegetables. Okay. I do, but not okay. the, from what I'm gathering here, I just can't even imagine yes, it looks how to do funny. that. No, no, Dr. Hyman says it's very doable and it is because in one day you can, um, well, you should definitely have seven, seven servings and that can combine fruits and vegetables. You can do it and your gut will love you when you do it. Write yourself little sticky notes of affirmations and put them out saying, I can do it. I need to have more fruits and vegetables. Okay. So I, I want to say again, I'm very honored to have given this presentation. I love you all. Thank you for coming. And Catherine, you, you saved me again with the technology. I'm better off in the field than I am um, on Zoom, but I appreciate that we can do this now. Um, and um, I love this class. How do we download the documents and the paper, the, the information? I, I put the link in the chat. You go to our website calendar and you find the event on March 29th and there are uh, all a bunch of PDFs that are attached to it. You can either print them out or just uh, uh, download them to your computer, whatever you like. So, so just click on the chat and you'll if something and will come up. Chat, uh, if you, and go to the chat and then scroll up to the beginning and you'll see a link and that will take you to our website where all the handouts are. Thank okay. you, Catherine. And, Thank and I you. love and I love your handouts. I love the recipes. There's a lot of information. Take your time. Don't you know, feel any stress. Stay, uh, one step at a time if you're new to this. Well, thanks everyone for coming and thanks, Chef Catherine, for all this great information. We're all going to be healthier for it. <laughs> little you, by Catherine. little. Hi, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. I'll talk Bye. to you. God bless everybody and your families. You too. Thank Happy you, Easter. Catherine. Happy Easter. Love you. Sure, I love you. Bye, Catherine. Bye, honey. Oh.